Okay, well here we are on the beautiful campus of Lehman College in the Bronx and I'm uh, trying to focus on a scene that will capture the beauty of a sparkling spring afternoon. Um, and I've chosen a view looking down a path that uh, gives you a sense of perspective receding to the the uh, backdrop of the green, light green leafy trees and uh, that has a beautiful dark and light pattern to it and that's what we want to look for when we're starting out with a drawing before this is a scene of trees and sky and leaves and people it's just a pattern of dark and light and the first step in the drawing process is what I call the compositional outline. The compositional outline are the key strokes that make up the, the formation, the foundation of your drawing. So I'm just going to draw in the key shapes. And what's wonderful about this technique is it's, it's what we call very forgiving in the art realm. Forgiving means if you don't like it, rub it out, change it. You can make all the changes you want uh, from the very beginning. So um, I just take the edge of my uh, sepia colored pastel and I block out. I'm, I'm looking for the pattern of darks in this picture. So I have this succession of trees that together they make uh, one big triangle of dark. And that's what I'm blocking in right now. And uh, within that area is also um, a, a couple of the buildings on the campus. So I want to make sure to have that. Things like people and uh, now there's a, a little buggy on the path. That comes later because these are things that are moving. But I want to stick with the, uh, the things that are staying still. So I'm going to just loosely, like I say, um, Using the side of my pastel, I'm going to block out a pattern of lights and darks. And when we are working on location or any subject, really, the objective is not to replicate exactly the world that we see. The, the objective is to take the, use the uh, information in front of us, use the subject to create a beautiful composition on our page so you can take a lot of liberties you don't have, you're not uh, restricted to copying exactly what's in front of you so I, I move trees to to the locations on the on the surface where they will work for me where I can see you know if I if there's too much of a building I can leave part of it out uh, I, I can do whatever I want and you want to feel the same way you you know the painting is not it's not a uh, empirical uh, replication of the world uh, it's filtered it's the it's it's taking the observing truly observing what's in front of you and taking that information filtering it through your sensibility and your experience to make it something of your very own and that's what we're going for. The step three is to block in my lights and, and instead of using a light color what I'm doing is using my eraser as if it is a light color. This way we don't cake up the surface with a lot of color and we are again working in a material that's very forgiving. You don't like the light there, you can take your rag and rub it right back in and get back to your original tone. The whole thing about drawing and painting is feeling like you're in control of the situation. 
and you want, that's why I love pastel or oil painting has a similar quality where you can make every kind of change feel free, feel like un, uninhibited to, to, to uh, try different things because you, you know full well that you can change it at any moment. You want to include things such as shadows as part of your dark pattern on the, on the surface of the, of the ground. So that's what I'm working on now and that will give us a sense of the, this is what we're calling the foreground. Here's your middle ground. I've created a background. Uh, if you want to get technical, there's a, somewhere over here, there's a vanishing point and all of your angles are receding to that point. A most simple way of thinking about it is if you connect two angles, they go back to a point. And if you run imaginary lines through that point, you can uh, create a sense of depth in your picture. So that's what I'm doing here, uh, that the, the path is going back to that point, and then the, the angles of the tops of the buildings that are uh, along that uh, trajectory are also um, going back to that point. So um, now I'm, I'm gonna, you know, uh, so what we are also um, creating a, a pattern of each tone that we're using. So we, we have to assign a tone to each uh, bit of our uh, the subject that we're working. Now, loosely, my subject includes the ground, the trees, the, 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 the uh, trunks and branches of the trees, uh, the buildings, the sky, and the leaves. So I would say um, that the, the sky is the brightest uh, part of my picture. So, um, I have created a composition, whether you can tell or not, from this uh, bunch of general forms. And uh, I believe that I am ready to add color. Now, you know, some artists purely work in black and white, uh, which is fine, but, you know, uh, with pastel. Pastels are such a rich, uh, beautiful material. I, I say that pastels are the closest thing you can get to uh, working with pure pigment. Um, so what, what are pastels? Pastels are basically pigment, which is a, a, a powdered, a ground up powdered mineral, or now they have synthetic colors uh, of pure pure ground color. It's a powder and then there's a little bit of glue or binder added to that powder and that's how you get pastel. Most of this uh, original tone is going to wind up being my, um, my uh, light, very yellowy green tree area. So I'm just going to start in now and uh, block out uh, because my tone is very thin I can go right over it with my yellow green pastel and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, just fill in everywhere that I can see uh, the leaves of the trees. When I first started um, <clears throat> I you know found myself getting frustrated because I was, you know, not, I didn't have a, 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 an approach, I didn't have, I wasn't, uh, you know, taught an approach to working and I would make a mess and get all frustrated. So I think it helps to have a, a specific approach to working <clears throat> and, and to try to stick with that, to try to go step by step. So the thing about pastels is, is you, um, it's not like paint where you can blend the colors. So you really want to have a lot of colors. I mean, you could blend them once they're on the, on the paper, but uh, it's good to have the, you know, enough of the, the colors that you're using to be able to, um, you know, get the effects that you want. You, know, you can't really, colors the same way you can with paint. 
so I'm just gonna continue to block these out. These uh, leaf, leafy parts of the picture until I get a pattern of the, the trees. And I don't have to, I wasn't able to find the same exact color I started, but that's no matter. And again, you know, the materials we use um, are flexible. And, and, you know, as much as I teach this uh, technique and give my students the same all using the same materials, uh, working with the same subject. For every individual student, you're going to get a completely different picture. Because, as I said, you know, they, everybody, the, the, the world is filtered through our sensibility. And, you know, there's so many, even with these simple tools, there's so many different possibilities of. Uh, you know, how to approach it, how, what kind of touch you have with the pastels, whether it's soft or hard, uh, whether you're, you know, into structure or in more of an impressionist uh, sensibility. And that's the wonderful thing about art, is that it can reflect, it's, 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 it's open-ended, you know, and I never know which way uh, things are gonna go with my painting. Um, I just uh, find a, a place that inspires me. I apply this technique. So, uh, as we move along and, and start, um, you know, making more passes, um, we become more confident that the location of our pattern, of our different aspects of our composition, uh, are basically where we want them to be. And once we've made that assessment, we can feel more confident um, uh, and more uh, about committing ourselves to what we're doing in any given location. In other words, you don't want to get all elaborate and start caking on all kinds of paint or pastels in an area where we haven't made a real decision about whether it's the right, you know, whether we've blocked it out in the right way. And we can, you know, start darkening our darks and uh, lightening our lights and you know getting into another level of detail but you see how I continue to work the picture as a whole uh, and you, what you want to keep in mind is whatever tool you have in your hand like right now I have a dark very dark almost a blackish brown pastel in my hand uh, I'm gonna use this all over the picture not just in one location um, so that I stick with this kind of uh, conscientious global approach to drawing. I want to work the whole picture together. So maybe I'm ready. I see two people walking down the path and uh, maybe I'll use my charcoal pencil to uh, sketch in. I know that they're, they're certainly not going to be there long enough to get every detail, but with a, with a, a charcoal pencil, I can uh, at least get some of the you know, at least give myself like a shorthand for some of the details. Um, and, you know, oh, just, I thought she was stopping, which would have been very nice. But, uh, you know, I could see that one foot is going one way and another foot is stepping this way. And, and this, uh, I could use now a, uh, a tool called a stump or a tortillon. It's a French word uh, for blending. Um, and I made a mental note that the light was uh, hitting this woman on the upper shoulder. 
on this side, uh, on the left side, so I can, you know, while I have that memory, I can, uh, you know, block in some of the, the highlights. Uh, and maybe I'll just leave that for now, knowing that uh, maybe somebody else will walk by and, and be a similar uh, stature that I can use as a reference. Sometimes I stop everything and take a photograph of, of the person or something that's moving or changing in the, in the uh, environment. But uh, so that now I have a, uh, you know, some scale reference uh, that I can use. You know, just scribble away. Pastels are, you know, allow you to do that. Well, actually, this I want a. Uh, I'm gonna have this uh, light hit the grass, which is, uh, is a light color. And then I have to realize that the shadow on the grass is gonna be uh, green also. So you know, I, this is a liberty that, I, that I'm taking. Uh, also, because in reality, this is a sidewalk here too, but um, ad living, <laughs> as it were. There's a, definitely an improvisational aspect to working on location. So again, with pastels, we're depositing bits of the pastel onto the surface so you know you can replicate the, the movement the, the shapes the look of different aspects of your drawing uh, by how you apply the pastel you could apply it in a very calligraphic fashion uh, you know, by the gesture, and that's, that, oh, <laughs> all right, thanks so much. Okay, you know, another uh, benefit of working out on location is the people who come along and appreciate it and share wonderful things with you, so that's really great. But, um, so, you know, uh, I think beyond all of the, um, the, uh, conceptual aspects of, let's say, the Impressionists, I think partly what they were up to was replicating the, the glistening uh, uh, aspect of nature and leaves. When I look at those trees, I see dots. I see a patterns of light and dark dots. Uh, and so if I want to do a little bit of an Impressionist thing or a pointillist thing, I can apply my uh, pastels uh, in, a, in a dot pattern. So the process, which I you know hope people can observe by watching this, uh, goes from a, a pretty uh, general sort of gross, uh, large form, uh, fast paced. Uh, process to a much slower kind of more considered and meticulous state. And people say, well, why don't you just use photographs and work from that? But those are people who don't, who haven't had this experience of working on location and feeling the the air, the wind, being, you know, getting the vitamin D from the sun, actually feeling nature and the world sort of participate in your creative process. Uh, and also, you know, you have to realize that it's not, the whole scene isn't just a moment. It's, it's what you pick up on as, as you're spending more time on a location and maybe a certain moment of the, of the time that I'm here, I'll, I'll notice something or something will change, the light will change just, just uh, subtly and, and it, I'll tune into something that makes the piece come alive and that will never happen from a photograph. And you don't need every detail to 
to give the, give a, a strong sense of what you're going for. In fact, I don't believe that the way we really perceive things that we see every detail equally. You know, I see some people's art, like especially people work from photographs, and they don't make a distinction uh, about you know what what should get more attention or less. Everything is treated equally, and I think it sort of cancels itself out. You know, I think that that, that balance of opposites extends also to uh, focus and diffusion. Some things you want to have in focus and other things not. Uh, some things, uh, you know, there are areas of compression and expansion, um, areas of refinement and, and, and other areas that uh, give way to abstraction. Now I'm using a charcoal pencil. And I can use that and blend it right into my pastel, which is a wonderful tool to use. Uh, and you can see. So what, what are the key ingredients that we have with a pastel uh, or with paint? Uh, what, 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 are the, what are our main tools that we have to work with? And they are tone or color and line. That's all, line and tone. So I've blocked out my tone. Now I'm, I'm getting into line a little bit more. I'm reinforcing my composition, my, the structure, the, the refinement of my uh, elements here with line, with accents, with, with refinement, with uh, uh, just uh, using line uh, to evoke a greater sense of definition. So we always have these, these fall back positions. Uh, you know, okay, what do I do next? You know, as a teacher, I deal with this all the time. Um, you know, students are at a, uh, you know, at an impasse and it's my job to <laughs> point out to them or help them to see how to move forward. And, uh, you know, one, one way would be to, to say, okay, it's time to, to break out the whatever tool you're using for creating lines and to see if you can re, restructure, re-evaluate, reconsider what you've done thus far and strengthen it with line and so I could do that here in the details of the facade of this building and it doesn't mean that you have to get tight you can keep with a, a looser approach uh, now I see oh there's smaller trees here maybe I you know which are basically lines in and of themselves so I want to maybe add that uh, to my pattern Here's a very good example of uh, the, uh, what happens when colors vibrate, uh, the war that, that warm and cool vibration. So I'm, gonna, I'm really going to get into uh, you know, this pattern of the sky peeking through the, the trees and how that sets up this uh, exciting dynamic. Now, uh, Soft pastels come in, in all kinds of uh, shapes, sizes, and um, costs, uh, and um, textures. And so this is a very soft one that allows me to work right on top of this yellow and, and deposit enough of the the, the new color to really bounce, you know, to really hold its own and not, not get mixed up with the yellow. So you can see how just by this little bit of uh, opposite color, the vibration starts to, you know, take hold. And that, you know, that's uh, the, the longer I, the more time I spent painting, the more I become a uh, a worshiper of the sun and of light and of color and more the more uh, exciting color has become for me 
And so, you know, more than just the, the uh, you know, shapes of the scene and the, you know, how, how much it, it, it uh, makes you, uh, you know, uh, aware of the specific location. Beyond that is, the, is that it's just an excuse to tune into the color vibration uh, that takes place, you know, in the world and to find that vibration in my painting, in my colors that I use. Uh, and you could see, like, if I start to, to get excited here and use, uh, you know, some unusual colors like a, a strong violet, it, things become interesting. So I've had my first uh, critique. Somebody walking by said it looked 3D, so I'm happy to hear that. You know, so often when I'm painting out on location, people come by and say, oh, you know, I pass this view every day. I never stop to look at it. Well, that's, that's what I'm, I'm able to do as an artist. And in reflecting that world in all of its nuance and in sort of celebrating it, and then sharing it with people with the final finished painting. Um, you know, I, I hope that the result is that people gain a, a greater appreciation, not just for the artwork and for me, but for the world <laughs> that they do pass every day. I mean, that's what's been fascinating as a subject. So in conclusion for today, I. I hope I've in some way inspired folks to try such a thing and know that you too can, with a few simple tools, some charcoal or pastels or even a regular ballpoint pen, piece of paper, you can go out, look at the world in a completely new way and just give yourself a little bit of time to, to create a, a work of art and reflect the special, unique place you live in the world. Okay, thank you for joining us here on the beautiful campus of Lehman College on this magnificent spring day. And remember, take your pastels, your charcoals and pencils and get out there and enjoy your community. You too can have this joyful, wonderful experience as an artist. And please join us again on Art and About with Danny Haubin on BronxNet. <laughs>